tutorial week 11. So I'm going to go through the tutorial sheet, which I hope you can see. Um, I mean, if you cannot see this clearly, please go to the website. You'll be able to see the PDF version of this copy. As you can, as you can see, as you can see this, there are seven questions in the tutorial sheet. And as usual, I will, I will go through uh, as many as I can and give you detailed solutions. And, and for all your questions, please use the chat room. For all your questions, please use the chat room. Right, I'm, I'm happy to answer as many questions as you have, right? Okay, let's start with question number one. So basically it says, um, you have a, a manufacturer which makes um, certain types of, um, certain types of things that, um, uh, you know, like uh, uh, cables, right? Like cables. And uh, the cables have strength. The one is strength is an important part of a cable, as you know. Um, and it says that the standard deviation of the strength is, is 30 kg. And the, and, the, and the manufacturer takes 40 components uh, and he notes that the that the mean, uh, the, the average, sorry, the sum of the, the, the strengths of the 40 component components is equal to 8328.4. Let me try to adjust the camera if I can get it better. It's slightly better, I guess. I mean, so the sum of the the, the sum of the strengths of strengths of the 40 component is this figure here. The question, there are two parts to the question. The first part is to test mu. Mu is the mean strength equal to 200 versus mu not equal to 200. And the second part is to test whether mu equal to 200 versus mu is greater than 200. Right, so let's try to do the first part. Okay, now we are trying to test this versus this. And, and you may recall from what, what I did last week. I gave you some formulas last week, if, if you may remember. These are some of the formulas I gave you last week. So here, for example, uh, this, this is the formula. These are the formulas when, when the um, population variance sigma squared is known. And there are three rejection rules corresponding to three sets of hypotheses. So the, the hypothesis that we are considering in part one of question one is of this form. So the corresponding rejection rule is, is this one, right? Okay, remember in, in question one, in, in the question one, we are saying that the standard deviation is 30 kg, which means that, that the pop, we are assuming that the population variance is known. Right. Okay. All right. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the rejection rule. So we reject H zero if root of n divided by sigma times x bar minus mu zero is greater than z one minus alpha by two. So this is the rule for rejecting the null hypothesis. I showed you the formula sheet. If you haven't seen it, let me show it to you one more time. This is the rejection rule, right? Okay. So let me put this put this in a in a box, right? Okay. Let me put this in a box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute the left and the right hand side of this box, and then see if this inequality is satisfied or not, right? So before I do that, let me write down what the data that is given to us. We are told that n, n is the, the sample size is 40. We are told that sigma is, is 30, right? We are told that um, mu zero is 200, right? And, um, and we are told that x bar, x bar is the sample mean, remember is one over 40 times the sum of x i. Okay, and this is, we are told what the sum of Xi is in the question. The question says it is one over 40 times, um, 
times 8, 3 to 8.4. Okay. Now, if you, if you work this out using a calculator, uh, this, is, this is what you will get. You will get this to be equal to 208.21. Okay, guys. All right, given all, and also, okay, we are also told to use two different values for alpha, alpha equal to 0 0.05 and alpha equal to 0 0.01. All right, we'll come to that later. Right now, given all this data, we can compute the left-hand side. So the left-hand side of, of star is going to be root of n, which is root of 40, divided by sigma, which is 30, uh, times the absolute value of x bar, which is 208.21, minus mu 0, which is 200. Now, if you compute this using a calculator, this will be equal to 1.731. Okay, so that's the left-hand side. Now the right-hand side is this guy here. Ob this obviously depends on alpha. So we are using, we are told to use two different values for alpha. One is 0.05, the other is 0.01, right? So let's, let's first take alpha to be 0.05. In this case, the right-hand side of star, right, it's gonna be uh, Z 0 0.975, right? And this will be, if you read this off the table, you know where to find the table for the normal, right? I mean, I mentioned this several times that you should go to the course website and click on the link. There's a link called formulas. And you should go to the very bottom of that link, you see the normal table, right? Okay, so this is the right hand side and this is the left hand side. And clearly this is not greater than 1.96. So the conclusion is that we cannot reject the null hypothesis. But formally we say the following. We say there is, there is no evidence to, to reject H0. Right, that's what we say formally, right? Instead of saying that, instead of saying that we cannot reject, this is the, normally in statistics, this is what the statement is, should read like, okay? So that's if alpha is 0.05. Now, if alpha is uh, 0 0.01, then the right-hand side of star will be as, Z 0 0.995, right? And if you read this off the table, this will be 2.576. So this is the right-hand side and the left-hand side is 1.731. So once again, this is not greater than this, all right? So once again, the conclusion is that there is, there is no evidence To, to reject H0, okay. Right guys, are you, uh, so this is the solution to part one of question one. Are you, are you able to follow this or so, no? If you're not, please let me know, I'm happy to go over. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, please let me know if you're not, okay. So that's part, okay, now let's go to part two of question one. Part two, the difference is that we are testing mu equal to 200 versus mu greater than 200, right? So, so if you go back to the formula sheet, you see the, the formula, the, the rejection rule that we need to use is, is the one, is this one, which is corresponds to mu equal to something versus mu greater than something. This is the rejection rule that you need to use, right? Okay, so, so let's see how we can do this. Excuse me. So this is question question one, part two, right? And uh, so the rejection rule. Let me write it down. We reject the null hypothesis if root of n divided by sigma times x bar minus mu zero is greater than z one minus alpha. 
Okay, so this is the rule we are using for part two. Okay. Right, so once again, I'm going to compute the left hand side and the right hand side. So let's start with the left hand side, right? Uh, and we know n is uh, 40, right? Uh, sigma is 30, x bar is 208.21, mu zero is 200, right? So if you compute this, um, this is what you will get. So this is the this is the left hand side. All right. To compute the right hand side, I'm gonna comp I'm gonna use two different values for alpha. All right. First, let's take alpha to be zero point zero five. Right. In this case, the right hand side. Yeah, it's gonna be equal to z. 0 0.95, yeah? And this will be 1.645, okay? All right, so this is your left, right-hand side, and this is the left-hand side. And clearly, this number is greater than this number. So, so the conclusion here is that we can reject the null hypothesis. But formally, when you, in statistics, you say the following, you say the following, that is there is evidence to, to reject H0. All right, guys? So this is the conclusion for when alpha is 0 0.05. Now let's take alpha to be 0 0.01. In this case, the, the right hand side of star is gonna be equal to Z 0 0.99, right? And if you read this off the table, this will be 2.326. Okay. So, so now uh, 1.731 is not greater than 2.326. So the conclusion here is that there is there is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. All right, guys. So this completes the second part of question one, right? Are you, are you guys okay with this or not? If it's not clear, please, please let me know. I'm happy to go over. Hello, guys. Talk to me. You guys okay? Everybody okay? Sure. All right. All right. So let's. Okay. So we're done with question one. Okay. The next question I'm going to do question two. So here we have a random sample of 10 from a normal distribution with the population variance equal to sigma squared equal to three and the sample mean equal to 0 0.7. And part one, we want to test mu equal to zero versus mu greater than zero at 5% level of significance, right? So, so once again, here we are considering the case where the population variance is known, okay? So if you go back to the formula sheet, if you go back to the formula sheet, which is this one, right? Remember, this is a case where the population variance is not. And for testing mu equal to something versus greater than something, right? This is the rejection rule. So we need to use this as the rejection rule, right? Right, so let's do that. Um, <clears throat> so this is um, this is question number two, part part one. So we reject we reject the null hypothesis if root of n divided by sigma times x bar minus mu zero is greater than z one minus alpha. Right. Okay. 
Okay. And let's call this star. Okay, star one. All right. Now, once again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compute the left and the right hand side. So before I do that, let me write down the data that is given to us. N is equal to 10. Sigma squared is equal to 3. Um, X bar is equal to 0 0.7. Mu 0 is equal to 0. And alpha equal to 0 0.05. So this is all the data that's given to us, right? So I'm going to use this to compute the left and the right. So let's start with the left hand side. Okay. So this is going to be root of 10 divided by root of 3 times 0 0.7 minus 0. Okay. And if you compute this, you will get 1.275. So that's the left hand side. Okay. The right hand side. Now alpha is 0.05, so it's gonna be 0 0.95, right? And this will be, if you read from the table, this will be this, right? So this is the right hand side and this is the left hand side. And clearly this is not greater than. 1.645. All right, so the conclusion is that there is right. Okay, guys, so because since the, the right hand, sorry, the left hand side is not greater than the right hand side, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. But formally, you should say something like this. You should say there is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis, right? Okay, guys, this is, this is clear to all of you or not. If not, please, please let me know. I'm happy to go over. Okay, so that's the first part of question number two. The second part, is asking you to compute the type two error probability then when the true value for mu is one and the true value for mu is 1.5. Right, remember last week or the week before, I can't remember now, I talked about how to compute how the type two error probability. I also did several examples, I think. So, so the, the probability of type two error Remember, this is defined as what? What do you remember? This is defined as the probability of accepting the null hypothesis when H1, H1 is true, right? Do you remember this? Yeah, okay. Now, if you go back to the question that we have here, in this question, right, the, this is the rule for rejecting the null hypothesis, right? So the rule for accepting the null hypothesis will be the opposite of this. So it will be the, so you will accept the null hypothesis if root of n divided by sigma right? Okay, given h1 is true if mu is greater than zero. So this is the probability that we need to work out. Okay, so this will be the probability n. We know n is uh, 10, I think, yeah. Sigma is uh, root of three, x bar is x bar, mu zero is zero, and this guy is 1.645, given mu is greater than zero. All right, so this is, the probability that root of 10 divided by root of three times x bar is less than or equal to 1.645 given that mu is greater than zero, right? Okay, now if you go back to the question, if you go back to the question says, 
says, asking us to compute the type two error at mu equal to one and mu equal to 1.5. So I'm gonna consider the two cases separately. So let's first suppose that mu is equal to, is equal to one. Right. In this case, uh, this probability uh, condition on mu being one. Okay. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is a, is a trick that I think I have shown you before. I think. I'm going to write x bar as right. You see, you see what I've done? I have I have written x bar as x minus one plus one, and the reason I have done that I will explain why in a minute. Right? Okay. In the next step, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this third term within the brackets <laughs> to the right hand side All right that will bring <coughs> excuse me uh, All right. Okay, now let me ask you a question. I don't know, just to check your memory. What do you know about this term? Guys, talk to me. Do, what, what can you say about this term here? Do you remember this result? I think I mentioned this before. If you have a random sample, which are IID, right, from a normal distribution, with these parameters, then root of n divided by sigma times x bar minus mu as the standard normal distribution. I mentioned this several times before, if, I, if I'm correct. Uh, I mean, so if you don't remember this, please try to do so, okay? So this is, this is the result I mentioned earlier, right? So using this result, guys, uh, I can say that condition condition on the population mean being equal to one, this must have the standard normal distribution. All right, less than or equal to 1.645 minus, yeah. And if you, if you compute this using the table for the, for the normal distribution, this will be 0 0.443. All right, so this, so here, so this is the type two error probability when, when mu is equal to one, right? Are, are you okay so far? Um, is there anything that you'd like me to go over? Please let me know, okay? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, so here I have supposed that mu is one. Now I'm gonna repeat the same thing again with mu equal to 1.5, right? So let me start with over here. So I'm gonna suppose, I'm gonna suppose now that mu is equal to 1.5, right? All right, so this probability was this one here, will become the probability that okay all right guys and the next step i'm going to do the same trick i i applied earlier so i'm going to write i'm going to write x bar as x bar minus 1.5 plus 1.5. Okay. 
All right, and the next step, I'm gonna take this guy here to the right-hand side of the inequality, right? So this will become, All right, and in the next step, I'm gonna argue, argue using the same result that I just mentioned, that this guy here must be must have the standard standard normal distribution because we are conditioning on the true population mean equal to 1.5, right? So so we can say that this probability is the probability that n01 is less than or equal to Uh, again, the conditioning, the conditioning is no longer needed because we have used the conditioning to argue that this has the standard normal distribution. So we have used the conditioning, so that's no longer needed once you used it, all right? Okay, so th this is simple. So this is capital Phi at 1.645 minus Okay, and if you compute this off the table for the normal distribution, uh, you will get this to be 0 0.14, All right? Okay, guys, anything, are you okay so far? Let me know if you're not, I'm happy to answer anything you have, okay? Hello, guys, are you okay? Okay, thank you. All right, so that's the, the first two parts of Question number two. Uh, the next part, um, let me go back. All right, here we are. So the, th the third part of question uh, question two is says the following: that assuming the sample mean remains the, remained the same, how large would the sample size need to be in order for H zero to be rejected in favor of H one? Right. So let's let's see how we can how we can do this. So this is uh, this is question number two, uh, part part three. Okay. So basically, the, what the question is asking you is the following. Remember, in part one, this is the rejection rule, right? That we talked about. All right. So what the question is asking you, what what is ends for this? rule to hold. So in other words, we know sigma, sigma is what, root of three. We know x bar is 0 0.7. We know mean zero is zero. We know that this guy is 1.645. So for this inequality, for this inequality to hold, what should n be? That's the question, right? Uh, and this is yeah. And if you take the square, if you take the square of both sides, this will be um, Will be this right, and if you use the calculator, this will be sixteen point five six seven five, right? And clearly, n n n must be an integer; it cannot be this, right? So the so the answer is that that n must be greater than or equal to seventeen, right? Right, because sample sizes are integers. Mu, sorry, mu zero is the is the hypothesized mean, which is zero. If you go back to the question, Hank, the question says that 
and the h0 mu0 is mu equal to zero so mu0 is zero remember mu0 is the value mu0 is the value uh, so you should, you should read here sorry you should go back here mu0 is the value uh, that uh, for which you are testing for right so you're testing mu equal to something versus mu greater than something. So mu zero is the value that you are testing for. So in, in question number two, your mu zero is zero, right? You follow that then? Hello guys. Any, any, other, any other questions guys with question number two? Talk to me guys, are you, are you okay with that? All right, thank you guys. So let, let so let, we are done with question two then now. So let's go back, let's, sorry, let's go back here. And the next question I'm gonna do is question number three. So if you read this, it says, it talks about lifetimes of bulbs, right? And it says there are 250 bulbs, right? And, um, and they have a sample mean of this much and the sample variance of this much. And you're testing for this versus this, and alpha is 5%. All right, in this question, right, you have to be a little careful because this question does not say anything about the population variance. It, also, it only gives the sample variance, right? So that means that you cannot use any of these formulas because all, the, all these three formulas here assume that the population variance is known, all right? Whereas this question does not say anything about whether the population variance is known or not. In fact, it gives the sample variance, which is, which is an estimate of the population variance, right? So implicitly, implicitly it says that, that the population variance is not known, right? Okay, so none of these rules can be, can be used. So we have to go back to, we need to go to this, go to, this is another formula sheet I gave you last week. <clears throat> in, this, in this sheet, we are assuming that the population variance is unknown, right? And there are three, there are three uh, hypotheses and these are the corresponding uh, rejection rules. So the one we are looking for is this. So the rejection rule is this one. So this is the one we need to use to answer question three, right? You guys following me, right? So this is the, we need to use this rejection rule to answer question number three, right? So let me write it down then. So this is Q3. So we're gonna reject, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis if root of n divided by s, s is the sample standard deviation times the absolute value of this is greater than the percentile of the t distribution with these parameters. So let me, once again, let me put this in a, in a star, right? Okay, all right, now, before I go ahead with computing the left and the right hand side, let me write down what is given to us. All right, so we are told, we are told here that your N, the sample size is 250. We are told that X bar is 1794.6. We are told that S squared, the sample variance is 2484. We are told that mu zero is the value that you're testing for is one eight zero zero, and we are told that alpha is zero point zero five. So this is all the data that's given to us, right? So using this, we can compute the left and the right. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. So let's start with the left hand side. So the left hand side of star. Going to be root of n, which is root of 250, divided by s, which is the root of 2484, 
times the absolute value of x bar, which is which is this minus mu zero, which is which is this, right? Now, if you compute this using a calculator, this is what you will get. Okay. Now, the right hand side, the right hand side of star. Uh, so, to read this, you need to use the t table, which can be found once again on the course website. Okay, so your n is 250, so it's going to be 249 minus. Alpha is 0.05, so this is 0.975. Now, this value you, you will not be able to read from the table because 200 and 249 is not in the table, right? But you can find something that is closest to 249, okay, in the table, right? And if you read that off, then you will get something close to this 1.96, right? So this is the right hand side. And, and this is the left-hand side, right? And clearly this is not greater than this, all right? Okay, so the conclusion is that there is no evidence. There's no evidence to reject the null hypothesis, right? Are, are you guys okay with this or not? So this question is slightly different from the last two questions we looked at, okay? Because here, here the question say, the, according, I mean, you have to read the question very carefully. It says, I mean, it says implicitly that, that the population variance is not known. Right, so you, so you need to use the appropriate formula for rejecting the hypothesis, right, which is this one in this case. Right. All right, guys, <coughs> any questions? Hello. Okay, are you all okay? All right, so this is question. So we're done with number three. All right, so number four. Uh, is this one. So here we have, um, we have a manufacturer of lifetimes of batteries. Um, and you're told that the standard deviation is 8.7, which means that, that the population variance is not, right? You're taking 20 batteries and their mean lifetime is this, and you want to test this versus this. Uh, the first part is to is to do the testing with five percent level of significance, right? So let's see how let's see how we can do part question four, part one. Okay. Um, so so it's clear from the question it's clear from the question that the population variance is known because it says it says clearly that the standard deviation is 8.7, which means that the population variance is not. And you're trying to test mu equal to 250 versus mu greater than 250. So if you go back to the formula sheet, where's the formula sheet? If you go back to the formula sheet, this is the formula sheet when the population variance is not. The formula that we need to use is, is this one, right? Because we are testing mu equal to something versus mu greater than something, right? Okay, so, so let's, let me do that. So this is, this is uh, question number four, part one. Okay, so, so the rule that we're gonna use is we're gonna reject H zero if, Right. This is the rule that we're going to use. Right. And once again, let me call this star. Right. Okay. Now let's write down what is given to us in terms of data. Right. Okay. So 
we are told that uh, n, n is the number, is the number of data, which is 20. We are told that x bar, is the sample mean, is 252.96. We are told <coughs> sigma is equal to 8.7. We are told that mu zero is 250. And we are told that alpha is uh, 5%, so 0 0.05. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is all the data that's given to us, okay? So using this data, I'm gonna compute the left and the right-hand side. So the left-hand side of star is gonna be root of n, which is root of 20, divided by sigma, x bar, which is, 252.96 minus mu zero, which is 250. Okay. Now, if you work this out, this will be equal to 1.521. Okay. And the right hand side of star, right, which is, remember, we are using alpha is 0.05. So this is gonna be Z0.95, which is 1.645. So this is the left-hand side and this is the right-hand side. Okay, and clearly this is not greater than this. Okay, so the conclusion is that there is There is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis, right? Okay, guys, are you, are you okay with this or not? Let me know if you're not okay. I'm happy to go over again, okay? Yeah, all right. So that's part one of question number four. Part two, um, part two of question number four is asking you this. Uh, calculate the probability that your test will correctly reject H0 when the true mean is 255 and also when the true mean is 257. Right, so this is similar to question two, which we, which we, thought of, which we did a, a few minutes ago, right? So let me show you how to, how to do this, you know. Um, so this is question, this is question number number four, part part two. So what we are looking for is the following, guys. We are looking for the probability of correctly re correctly rejecting the null hypothesis when the true value for mu mu is the population mean is equal to two hundred and fifty five. Okay. Now this is the rule for rejecting the null hypothesis. So this is the same as saying. like this. Okay, let's put in the values that we know. We know that n is n is 20, right? It was 20, sigma was 8.7, x bar is x bar, mu zero was what, 250, and alpha is 0 0.05, so this guy is 1.645, given mu equal to 255, right? All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is, is similar to what I did earlier in question two. You may you may remember. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna change this guy here. I'm gonna change 255 to 255. 200, sorry, 250 to 255. The reason I'm doing that is because the true population mean is 255. So because I have done this, I need to I need to add a five to make up for this. Okay. All right. You 
all of what I've done. I just added these two just to make up for this. Now I'm going to take this term here to the right hand side of the inequality. So this becomes the probability Sorry, not times min minus. Excuse me for my writing. Excuse me. Um, okay, like this. You see what I've done? I've taken this term to the right hand side of the inequality. Right now, the same using the same argument I made earlier that the distribution of this condition, condition on the true population mean being equal to 255, this must have the standard normal distribution. Do, do you remember, the, if, you want, if you like, I can show it to you again. Um, I don't know why I put it, just a minute. If, if you like, the, the result I mentioned a few minutes ago, you may recall, um, if this is, this is the this is the result I, I I talked about earlier that you should have a random sample from this, right? This must have the standard normal, right? So using so using this result, we can say that condition on on this this must have standard normal, right? Greater than one point six four five minus root of twenty divided by eight point seven times five. Okay. Right, and this you can write as one minus the probability by the complement rule, right? You can write it as this. Okay, right, and this, um, what you have here is, what you have here is simply capital Phi at 1.645, take away, take away this, right? And if you read this off the table and, and do the computations, etc., this is what you will get, 0 0.82, right? Okay, so are you, are you guys okay with this? Um, hello? If you say anything, if not, please let me know, right? So this is when mu is 255, but the question is also asking you to do the when it's 257. So it's simple, so it's a matter of changing the 255 to 257, right? It's, it's the same thing, right? I'm sure you guys can do that, all right? Um, so I've done the first four questions today. That means I haven't done question five, six or seven. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have the time to do that. But you should go to the course website, the full solutions to all seven questions are already online. So uh, you, can, you can see it. And yeah, because, Hang, yeah, I've got a question from Hang. Yeah, question two, it, it basically, it's just a continuation of part one, right? So we need, I mean, the, the, what, what, is given, what is given here, Hang, applies to all three parts, right? So, so your sample mean is, is 0 0.7 for all three parts of question two, right? And the population variance is three for all three parts of question two, right? And the sample size is 10 for all three parts of question two. Uh, okay, okay, Hang. And any other questions, guys? Any other questions from any of you? All right, guys. So, so you can see the full solutions to all the seven questions in the course website. So there's the typed solution, there's the handwritten solution, and there's uh, video solutions to all, all seven. Okay. And um, of course, you should, uh, this is the last tutorial for today. Next week, 
thing I already sent you guys an email earlier today. Next week, we have revision class. On Monday, we have the revision class from 10 to 11, and we will have tutorials for, for sheet, uh, I think it's sheet 12. Yeah, sheet 12. Sheet 12 of the, uh, will be on two sample test of hypothesis. So we will do that at the usual times uh, next week. So next week, as you know, will be the last week. But any questions you guys, you, you, you guys have about the course, uh, please feel free to contact me 24 seven by email, Skype, Zoom, or phone. You know my phone number. Uh, and you can, you can continue to contact me even after the end of the course next week, even during the summer or after the summer uh, and so on, okay? Okay. All right, guys. So have a have a good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, and, and take care of yourself. Right. And once again, just feel free to contact me 24-7 for anything. Okay. All right. Take care, guys.